I want to show you an easy way to calculate the future value of multiple cash flows on a Texas Instruments BA2 Plus financial calculator. Now, suppose we have a series of cash flows, CF1, CF2, CF3, all the way out to CFT. How do we calculate the future value? Well, the first cash flow is going to grow for one, two, T minus one years. Remember, if it started at year zero, it would grow for T years. It starts at year one. So it grows at T minus one year. So the future value of that is the cash flow in that period times one plus the interest rate raised to the T minus one power. Okay, the second cash flow grows for uh, T minus two periods, etc. And the final cash flow, the assumption off, we oftentimes make is that once that last cash flow is deposited, we just add it up. So it's going to be t minus t, or raised to the zero power, which is just 1. So it's just going to be the cash flow in year t. So let's look at a numerical example here. Suppose you have cash flows of $100 in year 1, $200 in year 2, $300 in year 3, and $400 in year 4. What's the value in year 4 if the interest rate is 10%? Right, so we take each cash flow, the 100 in the first year, and we compound it out for three periods. And we take the 200 and we multiply it by 1.10 squared. The 300 gets compounded one period, and the 400 gets compounded um, essentially for no periods. Okay, so we just get the 400 here and we just add it up. And we get these values and we add them up. Now this isn't too bad because there's only four cash flows and we really only have to find three future values. But if we do this, we come up with $1,105.10. And we can sort of verify that on the financial calculator, right? I can use this uh, time value of money function keys. And let's see, uh, if we have three periods and the interest rate is 10% and I have $100 present value, then I compute the future value, that's the 133.10. If I change the number of periods to 2, and the cash flow to 200, what's the future value? It's 242, and then we can actually just do this in our head. 300 for the present value, and 1 for the number of periods, 330 and 400, and then we just add them up, right? not particularly difficult to do and like I said there's only four cash flows so in the last one we don't even have to find the future value of so it doesn't take too long but if you had 10 or 15 cash flows here it would be quite tedious so what are we trying to do right we're finding the future value of each cash flow into the future an easier way is using the cash flow worksheet on the Texas Instruments calculator. Now, if you have the student version, you can't calculate the future value. It only calculates the present value, but that's okay. Suppose we find the present value of all of these cash flows, and then we have a lump sum, and we can just find the future value of that lump sum. So let's go back to our um, example here. So I'm going to pull out my financial calculator here, and I'm going to call up the cash flow worksheet. And remember to clear it, you hit second, and down here, uh, CLR worksheet. So the first cash flow is 100, and make sure you hit enter so you see that equal sign. It only appears once, so we don't have to, we just leave frequency as 1. Second cash flow is 200, and again, enter and leave frequency as 1. Third cash flow is 300. Enter. And the last cash flow is 400. So now what we want to do is we want to hit the NPV key and put in the interest rate. The interest rate is 10%. Again, hit Enter so we see the equal sign. Arrow down, NPV, Compute. That gives us the value at year 0. 75480. Now, what do we do? We can just find the future value of the 75480, which is 75480 times 
to the fourth power, which gives us the same value. Or let me just verify this. Okay, I'll use the time value of money function keys. Four for N, interest rate is 10%. Present value is 75480. And we're going to compute the future value. Oops, sorry about that. Um, 754.80 at the PV. Now hit compute future value. And again, we get $1,105.10. So that's a much easier way to do it. So even though you're calculating the future value, it may make more sense to calculate the present value first. And then once you know the value of that lump sum, find the future value. Why? Because the cash flow worksheet does all of that, um, finds the present value of all of these, and then adds it up for you. So you don't have to find the present or the future value of each individual cash flow and then add them up. It'll do all of that for you once you put the information in.